Welcome to part two of chapter 23 as we take a look at Teddy Roosevelt's and William Howard Taft's administrations during the Progressive Era. When we take a look at uh, Teddy Roosevelt, um, we, you know, we kind of look at him as being a very um, aggressive uh, president, somebody who fought for what he believed in, uh, believed that government should take an active role in kind of regulating and kind of directing the economy and business. Um, and he thought that the president really should provide leadership and ideas. Uh, in fact, um, it was uh, even kind of progressive in race relations, I guess you could say, as he actually invited the first African-American, Booker T. Washington, to the White House. So this was a president that kind of had his beliefs, and he was going to see to it that he did his best to try to accomplish his goals. And in fact, it was, you know, he's kind of used his bully pulpit as it was kind of known, you know, kind of standing up on his soapbox, uh, kind of uh, getting his point across uh, to the public to try to drum up support for some of his ideas. Um, and it's kind of said that uh, Roosevelt was a trust buster and he kind of tried to defend the Sherman Antitrust Act. And the first example of that was in 1902 in what became uh, kind of the Northern Securities Company. Um, legal actions, where he actually told his um, Justice Department to bring action, legal action, against this big kind of holding company um, uh, or securities company. And some of the biggest and wealthiest men in our nation, you know, J.P. Morgan included, uh, were behind this company. Uh, but eventually uh, they were brought up an, on antitrust um, lawsuit against them. And the Supreme Court actually ruled uh, in 1904 to, to uh, dissolve this company and break them up. And uh, Roosevelt uh, does go ahead and try to initiate other antitrust legislation pieces as well. Or uh, rather, lawsuits, I should say. However, his um, you know stance uh, wasn't always kind of clear-cut um, because as president, he did kind of believe that he could kind of determine between good trusts and bad trusts, uh, and he only went after the bad trusts, those that kind of were you know, unfair and kind of hurt the public. Um, but other large companies and trusts, he kind of let you know, kind of go on and didn't try to break them up. So he didn't really take a total clear stance. In fact, his, uh, his uh, su successor, William Howard Taft, will bust nearly twice as many trusts as um, Roosevelt does in nearly just you know half the time, only one term in office. Another example where Roosevelt kind of thrusts himself in the middle to try to you know kind of get what he wants is um, in the coal mines of Pennsylvania, uh, in what becomes known as the Square Deal. And as it plays out, these coal miners you know want uh, an eight-hour day, uh, they want higher wages, and you know a chance to form a union. Uh, so they kind of go on strike and. As uh, the, the supply of coal start to dwindle, prices went up. And what we actually see is that government, you know, kind of led by Teddy Roosevelt here, actually sides with the miners instead of the large business and corporations of which past, you know, administrations had done. And with uh, Roosevelt's support, um, he actually, well, what he does is actually threaten to take over the mines, um, you know, through the, you know, federal government and, and soldiers and whatnot. Um, so he kind of helps broker an agreement between labor and management, which kind of sets precedent that government could act as a broker. Um, and in reality, um, it also stopped really kind of, you know, other more radical things from happening. So even though it was a new step for Roosevelt and government to kind of get involved on the side of labor, it kind of kept this from evolving into something even more maybe dangerous or radical for the nation. But just really quickly to kind of a couple other reforms that and kind of aimed at controlling big business during this progressive era, you know, kind of sometimes aimed at the railroads. You know, we know what a big business, you know, they had been since their, um, in, in, you know, kind of institution. Um, one of those is the Elkins Act of 1903, uh, which you know, kind of did away with railroad rebates and also increased the uh, Interstate Commerce Commission's kind of powers to regulate the railroads. We also have the Hepburn Act of 1906, which further strengthened the ICC rate-making policies and increased its application to oil pipelines 
and other services. Therefore, you kind of really see Roosevelt you know, having gone after the trusts and big business to try to regulate these things, which would come to characterize this progressive era. And whereas Roosevelt had assumed the presidency after the assassination of William McKinley, you can see in 1904 he does win re-election rather handedly. And as you might expect then, we see further government reforms trying to clean up some of these evils of society. And um, one of those uh, things that eventually gets cleaned up is the meatpacking industry uh, with the Meat Inspection Act of 1906, which provides for kind of these sanitary rules. Uh, but a lot of times these changes don't come about without pressure from like the public. And um, sometimes they, they don't you know, learn about these conditions except through reading different articles and journals from what Roosevelt coins as the muckrakers. And these muckrakers would be like Ida Tarbell as she uh, wrote against Standard Oil and their you know, kind of illegal or underhanded practices. Or uh, Upton St. Clair here, uh, after he wrote The Jungle, kind of exposing the abuses and neglect of the meatpacking industries and how rotten meat was uh, getting passed as fresh meat and you know, kind of something we'll, we'll t- to kind of talk about this book in class a little bit uh, and uh, look at a couple of excerpts to kind of really get an idea of how filthy uh, and disgusting some of these uh, food products were that were coming out. And that's what kind of stirs up public emotions and puts the pressure on Congress to pass some of these laws, including things like the Meat Inspection Act, which I mentioned, but also eventually here the Pure Food and Drug Act. Uh, uh, which required that um, businesses kind of list the ingredients of what goes into their products. As we've looked at before, there was numerous things that um, you know did a lot of harm that were passed as you know kind of medicines, you know cocaine and um, morphine and um, heroin. Um, so these things were now listed and eventually regulated and even taken out. But another kind of big belief of Roosevelt was conservation. Um, and Gifford Pinchot, his chief of forest services, uh, with Roosevelt's support, you know, kind of uh, wanted to try to institute a you know, wise use of the nation's resources rather than exploiting everything and you know, using it up as quickly as possible, you know, setting some aside and preserving some lands and forests. And therefore, you kind of see the creation of national parks and forests around the nation. Uh, to try to preserve some of this land and keep it free from, you know, being you know, trying to you know, used for, you know, maybe wood or drilling for oil or other resources that we might need. But we'll take a look at uh, further policies uh, of like Taft and Wilson in our next episode.